I've, I've got it all figured out. Great. Uh, stretch it out. Now prepare to get schooled, kids. I like the word leave. I like it a lot. I like it more than go. Okay. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cartier. I am Mitta. Mitta. And this here is Frank looking good as ever. How you guys doing? It's a beautiful week. We're actually in the last day of November. <laughs> we are? Yeah. Oh. You didn't even know? No. No, we're in the last day of November. It's. I'm shocked. Have you already been playing Christmas music or are you a I don't December play f- music, but I have heard it in stores. Oh. Do you like cover your ears? Is that like a religious thing? <laughs> no. No music, no dancing? No, I'll dance. I'll dance. I'll do a little jig, just not to music. <laughs> Dancing in silence. What is it? Dan- dance to your own... Mu- no. Dance to the beat march of your... March to your... March to the beat Dan- of your own drum. Dance like no one's looking. Oh, yeah. Dance oh, like no one's watching. It's so dumb. March. It's so, it's, it's so overdone. Dance like no one's watching? Yeah. Yeah, you know what? Why do people never say, like, dance like everyone's watching? Like, even by yourself? <laughs> like get that pressure on you yeah actually because what you're insinuating is if people are watching i'm gonna do terrible yeah how about no practice dancing like everyone's watching so when people are watching you're like i've been here before you know it's funny that you bring that up because whoa <laughs> you have been here before you know it's that's funny that you bring that up because yeah it is quite opposite in, in that way where when you're dancing oh dance like no one's watching like be free but then when you're practicing for like a sport and they're like no practice like every shot should be game time <sighs> no i'm not like huh. we're proud, <laughs> but like put that pressure on yourself yeah like we don't need you to be good and so every so everyone who's dancing like no one's watching when the time comes that people are watching you're like this is that's when the nerves come in awkward, right really it's like you should be dancing like no one's like everyone's watching up until everyone's watching and then Dance like no one's watching. Or just always dance like people are watching. No, here's my thing. Because then you just be like, I've trained for this. I've trained for this. No, but there is that added pressure of actual people. So what I'm mm-hmm. saying is if you're always dancing, hear me out, mm-hmm. like everyone's watching, you've developed this this psychoactive thought of pressure, boom, boom, boom. And so then when you're when you're with everyone and that like pressure starts to build up, then you dance like no one's watching. Why? Because every time you were dancing like no one's watching, you were dancing like everyone's watching. And that, my friends, is the podcast. And that's it for us. But uh, we'll see you next week. We'll Dance, see you next month. Sing, dancing Wednesday. Dancing on my own. Um, a lot oh, of, really? We are now. Opposed to? When we were winning. No, I, I, listen, uh, don't let the Phillies, love the Phillies, don't let them take that song. I've been uh, rooting for that. So I love that song. And a lot of people got on the Phillies when back when the Phillies were in the World Series, they were using the song Dancing on My Own, a cover of Robin's song Dancing on My Own by Callum Scott, who remade it. A lot of people were getting on the Phillies for a couple of reasons. One being they weren't giving respect to Robin. Second being even when Robin made it and then when Callum Scott remade it, it was sort of made for LGBTQ angst. Oh. And they were like, you're... You're taking a song that was meant for a reason and just using it in sports. And I'm against all of those things. Right. Um, I am a support. I mean, like, yeah, I, I love the, I, I'm all about the recognition. Yeah. You know, like, I'm, I'm so for Elvis singing, you ain't nothing but a hound dog, but show me, you, like, who, who inspired it. Right. Don't say, he shouldn't have sang that. Say, you love that song, don't you? And I'll be like, yeah, I do. Right. And it's like, do you know that song actually comes from um, Big... What's Papa. That, no, what's that woman's name? Old Time. Big Myrtle. No, it, um, whatever. And, and she sang it. And then you then you learn... About, oh, like Billie Holiday or somebody? No, it was way yeah. before that. Oh. Yeah. Um, And it's like, then you learn like, oh, wow, that's really cool that it comes from it. Same thing with this. It's like, don't get mad that, that stadiums mad. are cheering it. No. You can you can inform. Well, we used to have a, a thing about that. All right, D- don't cancel. Correct, uh, don't cancel. Correct, don't cancel. Mm-hmm. And so I mean, it sort of follows that same vein yeah. of, of when when you see these culture these mad a- anger at people using cultures, 
Don't try to get them to stop using it. Yeah, I'm so over Show it. them you love that, don't you? Now let me tell you where it comes from. I'm so over it. If one more person tells me someone's canceled, I'm going to... Cancel yourself. <laughs> yeah, I hate it. And, um, you know, for the longest time, I didn't know. I was around on the first go around with the Whitney Houston song, I Will Always Love You. And I thought it was Whitney Houston's song. And for the longest time, I didn't know that it was from the, the little known star, Dolly Parton. Oh. She didn't care. She was like, go ahead and use it. Go ahead and use it. Dolly was famous for it, but not as famous as Whitney got with it. But like, it didn't take anything away from Dolly. As a matter of fact, when people found out, they were like, oh my gosh, we love Dolly even more now. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. Actually, I mean, think about it. People do that without even, it's not like they, there are a lot of writers that their whole joy is, and is like just even people who also sing like you see with like Ed Sheeran or Sia right and you find out they wrote that person's song they wrote yes. that per- and, and it's not this like yeah so why are you praising that person it's praise them both yeah praise the person who came up with it praise the person who made it popular praise them all and praise the Lord while you're at it um <clears throat> uh, anything else you have a good Thanksgiving yeah yeah so uh um yeah so we're going into december nights are getting shorter but we're not going to talk about that because i love to talk about the negative yeah on the positive side the sun is still there <laughs> yeah even when it's, you can't see it's it it's still there it's still there i know um it was actually it's really interesting um i was watching a video about these you know these uh travel vlogs not like the travel vlogs of come with me to maui mm-hmm. like the uh let's go to Let's meet, show things that ne- are not ever shown. Okay. Let's go to like the least visited country. Let's, let's right. And so they were with um a one of these isolation tribes in Africa, and um, you know they were like talking, but then like there was a video of like him and this one guy having a um just like, like a midnight conversation with this like younger guy of the tribe, just like asking about like, and he's like talking about planes. He's like. Like, wow, there's so many. How many people? Because there's not even 200 people in the tribe. They don't even know 200 people. There's 200 people on that plane. Crazy to him. But um, I think he, like, the guy was from Sweden. And so he was showing him and like telling him about the lights. He's like, I can't imagine the places that um have less sun. Or like that the sun doesn't visit. Uh-huh. Like thinking that the cold, like, places that are cold, it's because oh. they don't have sun. Oh, gosh. But well, I'm, I'm only saying it just in the reason of like, we are very educated to know all of, but like in reality, there's there's this belief out there that like you know when when someone's not if you can't see someone, it's not there, right? But just like the Lord, it is. <laughs> yeah. So the sun is still there. The sun is still there, and um, no matter how dark it gets, it's just it's just spend its time in Australia right now. How's your school? It's good. Um, You're a teacher. I'm a teacher. Oh, I, I got to experience my first year of teaching. I got to experience my first, when the kids get a break, I get a break. So we came off of Thanksgiving. Oh, right. I had five days off. It's what everyone talks about of how teachers are lucky. Yeah. You know what? And I'm lucky. Because mm-hmm. I know a lot of teachers are you know underpaid and stuff. And yes. I'm lucky to be in a position that I don't worry about that as much. And so I can just enjoy it but right. I, I as for my as for myself goes this was one of the things i was seeking out where i love the breaks the same way i grew up loving mean, you're indoctrinated into school right and um it always some people were ne- are never school people there might be night owls and it's like i do I, I don't do well at seven in the morning or i don't do well when i get breaks and work and breaks yeah. or if i'm not organizing my own i want to make my two week break when I want it, I don't want it on thing on Christmas, but um for me it, it's always been, I've always followed that schedule very well. So I enjoyed my five days off. I it, it reset me. I'm happy to be back. Be back. Be back, baby. Um, I want my baby back, baby back, baby back. Ribs. Yeah, you're supposed to say chilies. Oh, ch- before my time. Spencer, it's from the office. I know. You know what's crazy? You want, to, you want to be de- no? Let's not be depressed. You want to be depressed? No, it's not depressed. Not depressed per se. Maybe it needs to be reframed, uh, just the, like the dancing on your own. The U.S. men's national team. We made it out of the first prelims of what? The FIFA World Cup. Soccer, football. <laughs> you said the men's team. That could be swimming. That could be 
rifling. Anyone, anyone who's alive right now knows what the what, what, not what, true. I've been places. I went to places. Maybe in one of the isolation tribe. Actually, no, they probably know. I'm not in an isolation tribe. I've been places, um, and I I was at this place in Jersey on the weekend. It's called Bell Works. This is really strange, interesting building mall place. It's hard to explain. You have to go see it for yourself. Anyway, they had these big TVs set up with the football on it, the the, the soccer, and everyone was watching it. And I still didn't realize, like, who's playing or if we're even in the running or. Okay. Well, the well, U.S. is playing and they just made it out of the first stage. Now they're heading to the knockout stage. Awesome. It is awesome. Only, you know, there's only 32 teams get into the World Cup. Right. And, um, yeah, I think I saw Brazil win, maybe. Only 16 teams get into the knockout stage. Only? That's a lot. It's the world. There's not, what is there, 30 countries? People <clears throat> cheer. So we're in the top half. People cheer and climb up telephone poles when you even get into the World Cup. How many countries are, are in it? Like 182, 200? Yikes. It's all the countries How in the world. How many countries are in the world? I don't know. 250? And 182 get in? No. So only 20 people are crying? Uh, no. <laughs> I was saying how many countries are participating. Like, I don't think North Korea plays. Like, uh, I was saying, like, how many countries are registered to be like. Because okay. there's like, you know, everyone, you have to play through your own groups. Okay. Like, we're in CONCAF or whatever, which is like okay. North America, Canada, Mexico, yeah. all the Caribbean islands. And um, like when Trinidad and Tobago got into it, like years ago, it was like. They were just to get in it right. is ecstatic. Okay. So then imagine you're 32 teams out of the world. All right. And then to get out of the, they cut it in half to be the six top 16 teams. America's great. You know that. Not in soccer. In everything. Not in soccer. So we're laughed at. No, we're not laughed at. Oh, look at TikTok. Please. We are, we are I don't laughed know what part at. Of I don't care. I'm telling you, we're great. We're great and we're young. And to, and to come That's up. That's where my depression and to come up. is coming. To come up as we have, and well, guess what? We'll they, eventually be be the best in soccer. Well, no, that, that's that, that's what the comeback always is, where it's like if we put as much emphasis in American sports for soccer, yeah, like it would be no competition. It's a, it's the fact that we like, it's our own lack of caring that does not facilitate these kind of players, right? You know, it's the same way no other country will be able to compete in football is like is it because not the other countries are built like us, right? It's because from a young age. When you have millions of kids playing football, you're going to get the best. Yeah. They always say that. Like, we're the, you know, the best basketball player might have never touched a basketball. Right. It's just, it's the ones who have. Yeah. Best boxer. I mean, boxing takes, um, you have to learn. You don't know how to the point system. You don't yeah. know the penalties. Um, and, you know, and like, if you could find and, someone and train them, they could be the best boxer. Like, but like, look at Mike Tyson. How, opportunity. How close was he to not being a boxer? Yeah. Right. Because he, he was like a, a street kid. And he was just getting into street fights. And it was like, he was lucky to like, someone saw a little potential in him. Right. Brought him in, brought him from the ground up. But in reality, he could have just as easily been a tough guy. Right. You know, worked as a, you know, a construction worker. Everyone in the neighborhood knows he's a tough guy. Right. But it takes opportunity to showcase your talents. Yeah. Go ahead. The average age of the U.S. men's national team. 22. No, it was 24. <laughs> But I don't know. I've, I've gotten to an age now where like I've surpassed like these super athletes, and I'm like, it's all downhill. Stop it, Spencer. I'm just kidding. Stop it. Now, just we'll quickly say back to the school, and you were off for a week. Did you have little criers today? Were they able to come? It's harder for a child to break the schedule. I mean, you had fun, but did they feel like I actually don't want to be here? <laughs> Yeah, I want to stay home. Okay, it's, yeah, the break could have been good. It's been it's been a tough. Okay, for, it's been you know third day back. It's Wednesday, and um, normally every week Thursday is always bad. Okay, it's like we have the most kids. Okay, and I think just sort of like that sort of it's not Friday, so like but it's after you know the fourth day, it's always like put it's been like Thursday every day. Really? Actually, you know what? Monday wasn't that bad. Really? And I if I had to be if I had to like psychoanalyze what's going on. It's Monday also sort of was a new thing. Like, oh, right. Oh, we're back. Oh, School, my friends. Wait, I'll try that. And yeah. it was like Tuesday and Wednesday, I think, were really the 
oh, we're really doing this I don't want to like, we're, we're, Yeah, <laughs> it's like this is a routine. Monday was like, yeah. this is almost a break from the break. Mm. And it, it's been rough. Right. Uh, especially this young. It's like, you. it's sort of like you're, it's not once you get older and you get beaten down by life, by like the third grade. <laughs> <laughs> um, you sort of know, like, yeah. you might like be like tired, but you like, can endure it. Yeah. This age is like the entire first three months or two months of school was this is the routine you know it's like and you just get them enough to be like accept it and then it's like they get to be with their parents yeah, again for five yeah, days yeah, yeah and it's like wait no i thought that was it i thought uh, you were so but it's i mean well uh, with all the bad there is good and with all the good there is bad and that's balance that's right it is wednesday guys though and um as you know uh what we've done for the past how long have we been doing this 15 years <laughs> yeah um, we have a little segment called One Word Wednesday, where we pick a word out of a hat and um, out of the dictionary, U.S. dictionary, U.S. men's soccer. If we pick the word football out, we'd be talking about soccer. Wait, we'd be talking about American football. We go by the American dictionary. Is it F-U-T, even if you're in England, or do they call it F-O-O-T? That is a great question. Mm. I know they call it footy. You know, it's funny. I don't know if it's like a tangent, but so right. Like, I think especially with TikTok, this is really the first U.S. Um, Olympics that there is has been TikTok. Olympics? Oh, sorry, U.S. Um, or FIFA World Cup. Okay. That there's been TikTok. Okay. And that's like really shortened the gap more than any other social me- media platform of countries like just bantering with each other. And so I think that's why you see so much of this, oh, okay. especially England, U.S. rivalry right. in soccer. But um. One of the things is like a big thing is it's called soccer, not football. Oh. Even like the, the the U.S. guy scored in the first game and pulled his shirt up, and the white shirt said it's called soccer. Not no, football. you're kidding. And um, but I I saw this guy and he was like, he went through the history of why it's called soccer. Hmm. It's actually English schoolyard slang. No. Yeah. Um, back in the 1800s, early 1900s, I don't know. Um, they started saying two words they started saying um the football association and rugby football or because fo- they had the two they, 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 right. they called rugby football and they called soccer so association of and then federation of rugby whatever at the time they had they were big at uh all of the school year the slang at the time was to shorten words and add er okay and that you still he- uh, hear that where it's like tenor and stuff and like a uh, cup of tea. It was like uh, I have a cupper. How and funny! So they shortened every word, so association turned to ASOC, and it's like that would be the shortened version, and then ER. So you're trying to do some soccer. I love it. And um, so did they learn their lesson? No, I don't, I'm not <laughs> sure that anyone saw that. But so yeah, so it's one word Wednesday, and if the word was soccer, that's what we would be doing. We'd be talking about. Oh my gosh! We'd be talking about some realities of it, and then we bring some spiritual yeah. side of it. Maybe we'll, we'll maybe we'll open the Bible. We got Bible around here somewhere. Um, but without further ado, let's get into it. And today's word is leave. 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 Not leaf. No, leave. Get out of here. <laughs> we've we've done leaf before. I was wondering, you know, leaves. What? L- not leaves. I'm pretty sure we've done a leaf podcast really? yeah. before. I don't know, but it might have been one of the ones that never worked. Leave. Get out. Leave right. right now. Oh, yeah. It's the end the of end. you and me. It's too late. I can't, can't wait, wait for, for you to be young. Because I don't know. Okay, okay, okay. Who's that? Jojo? Jojo Siwa? Uh, Jojo Siwa. Yeah. The original Jojo. Um, leave. Leave. Um, Time to leave. Leave. Okay. And um and any reason you picked this word today? No. No. Just I can't remember. I can't remember the origins of picking it. Or the origins of the word. Um. No, I can't remember any of that. You're correct. There's leaf, which is not what we're doing. Um. And that the plural will be leaves. But no, I don't know the origin of the word. What would it be? Leave. It doesn't. I don't know Latin. Did you take Latin? No. Me neither. Anyway, um, leave is in the Bible so many times. Well, I mean, can I just say? Of uh, course. One thing immediately when I think biblically of leave, I think of a um, a sin. What, 
an a, not an acronym. What's what's a word? A synonym. I think of a synonym, which is exit, which is Exodus, the second book of the Bible. The great exodus yeah, yeah. from Egypt right. was, you could say, the great leave yeah. from, from Egypt. Right. They're, they were leaving. Yeah. Almost before they knew they were, where they were going. Yeah. There's something to that. There is. Leave. Um, it's, it's so many times in the Bible. A million times. Or maybe just like about 200 yeah. plus. Depending on what, what version you're looking at. Um, because they're always saying, uh, leave leave your house, leave your family. You know, um, a, a man leaves his mother and father for his wife. Leave your wife. Leave. Leave. Um Leave everything. Anyway, so um, it was hard to pick where I wanted to go with it, but um, I went to the to the Gospels because we talked before. If you go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it's you have Jesus talking. You do. So if you need to pick a place to to, to um, choose from, that's not a bad place to go. So I was looking, and of course, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all have references about leave, and um, they had like about ten references each. But I liked John because I feel like the ten the ten references that I saw from the New International Version for leave they were all like familiar ones they were all winner ones. Um, well, like two they're not I don't much to talk about. It's like when Jesus decided to leave for Galilee or leave to go to Judea. But but um, besides those, you have um, remember the the perfume girl yeah. who was. Um, she used the expensive perfume to wash Jesus's feet. Yes. And they're mad at her. He says, leave her alone. And then, um, and then as if, and then also in John is when Jesus ends up watching, washing the apostles feet. And at that time he says that it's time for him to leave this world. Mm-hmm. And, um, so these are, you know, familiar ones. Um, of course, everybody knows peace. I leave. My peace I leave, le- peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Yeah. That's um, Jesus not leaving himself, but leaving something behind. So you can leave or you can leave, you leave something. Yeah. Um, so he's always telling them, come, let us leave. Um, in the other, in like, I saw like Matt, Matt, call him Matt. <laughs> Matthew Maddie. and Mark talk about um, when Jesus is on the cross and he says, um, Oh, he, he's about, he's almost about to, his physical body is almost about to expire. And uh, they, that's when they give him the vinegar on the po- on, sponge. Yeah, the sponge. And and they're like, well, Elijah, see if Elijah will save him. And uh, the people say, leave, leave him alone, which I thought was interesting, right? Because in those um, gospel pieces, th- that happens. But in, um, in John, Jesus actually tells... Uh, the apostles in in john 16 32 jesus tells the apostles you will leave me all alone yet i am not alone for my father is with me and you know it, it, it's again one of those like foreshadowing yeah. um things which ends up happening but he says it his own words jesus says leave a lot um tells the woman get up uh, leave uh leave, go leave and send no more you know yeah. What are, what are, what are you getting? I'll this? tell you. I'm, I've, I've got it all figured out. Great. Uh, stretch it out. Now prepare to get schooled, kids. I like the word leave. I like it a lot. I like it more than go. Okay. Um, leave. It's what? Let's break it down. I kind of okay. said. I kind of said it early. You know, when I talked about the Exodus. Leave is leaving a situation, not necessarily going anywhere okay. all you're doing is leaving the situation okay and a lot of times when, when when you hear it like it sort of just get out of this place right we're gonna I'm, I'm leaving here right so where are you going i don't know and why i like it is because um the, like, there are so many times where we talk about a path and um you know wh- where you're supposed to be next and where you're supposed to be, and we talk about being timid we talk about the fear, the the leap of faith, all these things of like where you want to end up being. Mm-hmm. But more important, like you know, you tell someone, oh, the places you'll go, and 
and go do bigger things and go to a new city, start another job. The first thing is to leave. You need to, and it's also the hardest thing. That's interesting, yeah. If you sort of changed your perspective of don't go. When, when you tell someone to go, they say where. When you tell someone to leave, you know exactly what to do. Wow, that's really interesting. And um, so even, even what was, um, uh, there was like one of the last quotes you said. I'm like. Jesus says, you will leave me all alone, yet I am not alone, for my father yeah. is with me. And so even that, in like a sort of a backwards way, he answered the question, right? Like he answered the unknowing of you would leave me all alone, which is leave me. But then you don't know where you're going. You don't know what's right, happening. Right. And he's like, he explains it to them the same way. If I if, if leave your situation and it's like, uh, well, I don't know. It's like then you you tell them and then you'll end up in a better situation. Right. You don't normally have to run through it like that. Right. But he did it with them. Of You would leave me, exit away from me. You're not leaving me. Your father's. You would leave your situation. You're not. You're not going to be by yourself. You're going right. to go to your next situation. But this idea of leaving, I think, is so important because in anything, that's really like the the people think. I think the fear is of the unknown. Right. I think a lot of times the fear is leaving. Yeah, you're. you're I think you're absolutely and, right. And you see it. You may see it in abusive relationships. Like it's like. The fur the what the recommendation is, but it's the hardest thing. It's you might say like, and it might be part of it of like, oh, I don't have anywhere to go first. It's like it doesn't matter. Leave first. In in when the Exodus is called Exodus, first thing I said in this podcast was, um, Exodus synonym for leave, Ag- Exodus exit leave, and that was the whole part of the right. They they were in a bad situation. They right. were in Egypt. They were enslaved. Right. Moses got them to leave. You're right, but they leave didn't know Egypt. where they were going either. They, they just kept wandered walking. for 40 oh, years. But they did leave. And, and then you know they, they they didn't know where they were going. They didn't know what was going to happen. They something you know, they You're were right. He said, "Let's go." They would be like, "Let's go where?" And he, they, but it wasn't that. It was let's leave. Let's, let's leave. leave. Let's leave. Let's leave. We're in a bad situation. Let's and that's leave. in real life. That's in like current time. Like if you were at a, if you were at a bar and someone said, "Let's leave," you kind of are like. Okay. Like you yeah. get that you get the message that we need to leave right now, even though we, we, we might just be going to the car. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and, and, and so then they wandered, they had nowhere to go. And some people said, why did we leave? Right. And it's because we weren't in a good situation. It's like, right. Oh, we're not in a good situation now. And it's like, yeah, but the possibility to be in a, like, you need to leave first. Right. And that's, that's always the main thing. But so many times that we, like, it seems like a negative word, right? It seems like, leave or like oh uh, it, it almost kind of in a way it's like this quitting factor it's like people want to be promoted but to leave is uh, i'm done right but in reality it's like leave is positive leave is, is is leaving one situation right to allow other situations to come you can't get in another relationship if you're in a bad one you need to right. leave the first one and in, in in doing like, it's an it's an act yeah like you're it, saying leave it behind whether you say whether you're saying that or not yeah you know um yeah the the uh i guess it's the uh the adulteress in uh john 12 7 i have now go and leave your life of sin so it's like go but don't bring don't bring this in with you you yeah. know leave leave that behind and and so i mean just in the end to make it spiritual right because you can really kind of use this concept anywhere but i think a lot of people are waiting in spirituality mm. for god to tell you to go absolutely god to tell you to do this and it's like if he says something i'll make the call it's harder to realize the times you're being told to leave interesting and it's like what it's like no i, I I'm, I'm not telling you to you know like leave and or, or leave and send no more it's I'm not saying go and do this it's leave and it's a it's a, like that's a realistically it's easy to be told or to, to feel a, a spiritual compulsion to go and do something. People are waiting for that. Right. They're like, call upon me. Just tell me what to do and I'll do it. Right. Not as many people are willing to hear just the leave. Yeah, because that's faith. That's that's real. Like, that's le- faith. Leave it going. going it, it, a lot of people refuse to leave unless you tell me, unless you can assure me that yeah. I have reservations. And I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not yeah. leaving. Go, going is following. Right. And you like, you can use it in your day to day life, but you can look back at like at Moses and stuff. And Moses had faith 
God told him to leave. He said, mm. get your people and leave. A lot of people then heard that and they were following, right? And the, but when they heard the same thing, they asked, why do we leave? And it's like, only only God knew, but it's the, it's the hardest thing to do, but it's the thing that we don't like to be called on for because it sort of doesn't make sense to us. And it requires, you think that 35th year that people weren't doubting, why did we leave? How about Noah? Yeah. Leave. Leave. He had absolutely nowhere to go because there was nowhere to go. Yeah, but but and yeah, he was preparing to leave even before. Right. And it's it's this idea that people think, well, no, I mean, what if what if I'm not being called for anything? It's like it's the it's the most faithful thing thing you can do is, is right. to leave a situation because it doesn't it, at face value it doesn't show the promise that another one's going to show. Right. But sometimes it takes leaving to show a new situation. Right. Yes. You know, you, you can't, you, you'll never know if anything's out there if you don't look. Absolutely. And, and you'll never know, you'll never be looking if you never leave. Um, Tony Robbins, I believe said, you will leave when, you might have to cut this out. <laughs> I can't remember something about you, you'll leave you, you can only leave or you will you'll, you're more likely to leave if leaving is they're both uncomfortable but if staying is cut this out maybe i'll find the quote and put it right here. cut it out <laughs> all right that is our podcast <laughs> can't end like that on my we'll, first day back we'll, we'll be back tomorrow leave for it. walk through thursday don't leave it in i'm gonna leave it take in. it out all right i'm gonna i gotta leave so i can't keep podcasting i'll uh, be back tomorrow for walk through thursday until then be good and leave. Just leave, leave now. Leave. Leave. Peace. I'm leaving.